Hey guys, Eric with Blue Line Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Your time's important to me as always. And what we're gonna do in today's time is something I am super excited about. Finally got the John boat to bass boat build done. So we're gonna do a walkthrough on this, show you everything that we put on this boat. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Stick with me. Okay guys, so first we're gonna start with the bow of the boat, work all the way through the boat to the stern here, and I'm gonna show you everything we did to it. So if you guys watch videos one through four, and if you didn't see those, I'll leave a link down in the description. But uh, we're gonna start up here with the, the, the deck here. First thing we did was uh, decided to go with the Hummingbird uh, side imaging Helix 7. So got that on here. I mounted it up front with the ram mount. And uh, I think it came out really nice. And if, if I end up wanting to move it around, I can always do that, it's not a really big deal. And then uh, moving over here to the, uh, the hatch, you guys know I went with a prefab hatch on the front. I did a build hatch on the back. I'll open this up for you guys to see. And uh, just kind of storing uh, the bilge pump down in there and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, anchor and just all those odds and ends, lures and stuff like that. But anyway, this hatch right here is 24 inches by uh, 14 inches, so a nice big hatch so I can get a lot of the bigger items in and out. Okay guys, when I was first starting to uh, think about doing this build, and, and I, I knew I wanted a Minn Kota motor. I've had Minn Kota for years and years and years, and it, it's definitely my brand of choice, but I was gonna go with the cable drive uh, originally. I was gonna go with the Edge. I've used that extensively. I like it, but um, a buddy of mine, Scott, who's actually behind the camera right now, started talking about the power drives and how just there's less of a footprint, because you have this small cord, 18-foot cord on it. I can run it from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. So what I went with was this Minn Kota 45 power drive, 45 pounds of thrust. Um, and instead of a ram mount up here, what I've got is called a rail blazer uh, mount. It's a little bit cheaper, but it really wasn't the price on it. I just like the way this, this mount works a little bit better um, than I do. And it, it's a little less weight too than the ram mounts. And I'm, I tried to take weight off of the boat where I could, but this can adjust um, on these two appendages here. And not only this motor, but I've ever decided to switch it out with that as well. And then working forward here, uh, just kind of covered up some of the wiring with rod sock. Uh, I think it kind of looks cool, has a real nice look to it. We'll show you where we did at other places in the boat with the wiring as well. And then the real centerpiece of this, the, the motor mount on this, the bracket, this uh, a buddy of mine did for me, uh, just went above and beyond. This is uh, 80 20 aluminum channeling. The top is 3 8 of an inch solid aluminum, the bottom is 3 8 inch solid aluminum. That's what this is built on, and I think it looks awesome. And obviously, it's not going anywhere. You can run a Humvee over this, and it is just not going to move. Uh, I think it came out looking really slick. So, that's the power system on the front of the boat here. Now, we're going to get into some of the wiring because you know, the wiring we did. I would estimate at least 350 feet of wiring in this boat is, is what's in here, and that, that's at a minimum. Went with a leaner seat or a pedestal seat up front. I did that because really it, it eliminates some of the footprint up here. Um, just give me a little more space on the front deck. Kind of like we talked about with the power drive motor. I don't have that big cable that I'm fighting with and wrestling around with. Gives me a little bit bigger footprint as well. Um, so I got this, and it's actually adjustable. It'll adjust about a foot and a half up on this. For not only my height and I'm a taller guy but anybody else who might be in the front of the boat so got this adjustable it's also on a pin system here where I can just pop it right out I went with the pin system rather than threaded it's a personal preference but I know I, some of the boats in the past that I fished out of that threading tends to get loose and I know this this socket here can get loose as well but uh, I went with that pin system where I can just snap it in and out because it's going to be interchangeable here with the back seat so if I'm bass fishing I'll probably not even have this in. I'll just have the leaner up front, but if I want to do something like crappie fishing, bluegill fishing, something where I'm sitting down more, I can just pop this seat out here as well. Ugh. Kind of at a bad angle there, but I can pop this out and uh, interchange it with the front seat. So guys, um, from previous videos you saw where I built the panel here and went with a three rocker panel system. Also has two USB ports for hooking up GoPros, charging up a phone while I'm out on the water. Has my uh, voltage meter so I can see how much juice I've still got left in the battery system and I'll show you that in a minute. But the, the first button right here is for mine, you can hear it. It's for the live well and I'll show you that in a second. Second's for the lights and I'm gonna go through all the lights here in a second too. It's got a 10 LED lighting system is what we went with here. The third button is not being used right now, but uh, 
we put the air conditioning symbol on it just a joke you know we get somebody who doesn't know much about boats we can tell them to turn on the air conditioning for us when it gets hot out here and then the last right here is a cigarette plug um, outlet and that is to hook up the bilge pump to pump water into and out of the live one obviously if we get water in the boat we can pump that out as well so guys this is a little door uh, a build here that houses the fuse block and the fuse blocks just on some velcro here put it in here just to keep it uh, from getting moisture on it getting water on it out of the elements and such and this fuse uh, box here has all the accessories hooked up to it sonar unit things like that if I blow a fuse on one of the electronics I can go in here have easy access to it to be able to get to this and replace the fuse that I need to then it just slides back down right on that little velcro pad there door shuts we're good to go so this is the live well we converted a 52 quart Coleman cooler into the live well and one thing we did here um, that the original uh, aerator came with a little six inch piece of PVC with the holes in it seven little holes in it to aerate it I don't think that's adequate Scott didn't either um, he'd had this on a previous build just took it and cut it down some here at the elbows and so now we have 360 degree aeration we're gonna take the boat out a little bit uh, I'll put some water in it and show you guys how it works there. Hopefully we'll throw a few fish in it and see how it works as well. So here's the bilge pump and how we did this is uh, just put a piece of poly cord on it right here, run into a carbiner and the reason being that way I can just chuck this whole thing over the side and run the hose down in the live well, fill up my live well. Then we get home, the reverse, I can just chuck this down in here, run the uh, hose over and empty out my live well. And the carbiner's just on here so I don't lose the whole shooting match if something happens and uh, lose a grip on it so I can get it back and plus when I'm pulling it back in I can pull it by the poly cord and not the cord itself which over time is going to weaken that and probably cause it to fail. So guys talking about this quick disconnect for the live well uh, one thing I forgot to mention up here on the trolling motor we also have a quick disconnect plug that we installed right on the side here if I want to take this trolling motor off one another thing I didn't mention is on this mounting block that was built out or built for me by a buddy of mine if you take these two screws out with the Allen uh, wrench right here. There's two more up on the sides here, so four of those. This whole cover slides off, so it's like a quick disconnect. So if I want to take this complete, just slide it completely off for transport or from somewhere where I'm worried about theft, I can slide this whole trolley motor off. But this easily comes um, off and on right there, just plugs in and out. And also underneath the bow, there's another quick disconnect where I can disconnect this whole trolley motor um, should I want to switch it out or for some other reason just want to remove it but everything we did we did with quick disconnect plugs uh, just to make it easier all right guys back of the boat stern of the boat here now um, I'm really super happy by the way all this turned out and I'm going to show you guys a uh, big part of the, the design and then the majority of the wiring Scott did and it looks fantastic so I'll show you guys here so the back hatch uh, did that you saw in one of the other videos with piano hinge there kind of gave me fits but here's what we did so a two battery system and this two battery system, battery number one is running the trolling motor, battery number two is running all the electronics, and then here is a two bank NOCO onboard battery charger. So I don't have to do, I don't have to remove these batteries obviously from both to charge them, and I'll show you the plug we put in for that in a second too. Then right here, we have the battery switch, so it's off, on, and then there's an emergency switch too, where I can switch these batteries over if I need to. 50 amp circuit breaker here, uh, if you have any kind of issues, hopefully it's going to trip that uh, breaker and not fry something out as well. And then inside here, you'll see these LED lights, and I'm going to show you where all the LED lights are here in a second as well. So, so guys, the top section here, we were talking about the two bank charger uh, right here. I can just open that up. We put this NOCO plug in, this AC plug, plug in the extension cord and be able to charge up everything without having to do anything else, not even really lift up the hatch. Probably will to give it some air, but don't even have to lift up the hatch. Can just uh, plug it in directly on the back deck. So on this boat, decided to go with an LED lighting system. Obviously went with the blue, uh, blue theme for blue line fishing, but there's 10 LED lights on this and I'll show you where. So on the back, we did two here right on the stern, then inside the rear hatch. There's also two in here. So if I'm getting gear ready early in the morning, it's not light out, you can be able to see uh, down in the hatch pretty well here. And then as we go to midship here, what we did, we did some drop wires and also did LEDs, indirect lighting, just kind of underneath the deck. And trust me, it looks pretty cool uh, once it gets dark. And I'll try and show you some footage on that as well. And then as we go up towards the bow, 
we've got two LEDs inside the hatch here, two in here, two in the rear hatch, so that way we can see everything I've got down in here. Uh, once again, uh, if it's not daylight hour, we're night fishing, doing something of that nature. And then up front, two more, and one with indirect lighting, so they're facing down, uh, and it just kind of casts that light out on the, the front of the deck there on the bow. So 10 lights in here, uh, I love the way it came out. And here in a little bit, uh, I'll try and show you some, I will show you some footage of this all lit up once it gets dark. So also guys, on the rear of the boat, uh, that's where we have the transducer. Like, you know, I think most, I mean, I, I could have mounted it up front, but I, I don't want any interference with any prop wash or anything like that. So transducer going to the Helix 7 and the wiring going up and connecting into all the wiring that we showed you guys earlier. Uh, like I say, all in all, super happy with the way this turned out. It is definitely, I think, gonna be the small boat that I've always wanted to have for small water, super practical that have every feature on it that I would want to have out of a small bass fishing machine. Okay guys, here's the live well in action. Um, as you can see we were talking about earlier, replaced that little six inch piece of PVC with 360 degree um, aeration. It's, it's worked great. We've had some fish in here. We've got a couple nice fish in there. Uh, bass that we've had in there most of the evening and they, they were in just fine. So super happy with the way the uh, live well turned out. Okay guys, we just got done fishing for the evening and this is the LED system. Give you a little look at it. Uh, after that, like I say, two on the bow, two inside this uh, interior, or the front hatch there. And come to midship here, we've got a couple that are indirect lighting uh, right in the middle here. Hopefully this turns out pretty decent, but you guys can see it well. I know that's gonna be kinda whitewashed there. Two on the stern and then two in the back hatch with the battery system. Overall though, I'm super happy with the way the, uh, the LEDs turned out. I wanted to show you guys uh, the cooler mount system that I put in here. So you can see it's just a piece of reinforced plastic. Uh, these corners right here, it's a little kit that I bought at Academy Sports. One stainless steel screw going down through each corner um, all the way around. And it's designed just so now the live wheel will not slide around anywhere. It's got these uh, bungee cords on each side that connect into the handle. And uh, once again, I can move this thing or try and move it around and it's not moving at all. Even when we put 15 gallons of water in, which is about what this will hold, uh, give or take. Um, really, really heavy, you know, at, at eight pounds per gallon about uh, for a gallon of water in there. But it's not going to slide or move at all. So anyway, another little addition uh, to the boat there. And one other thing I was going to show you guys too, when we did the lighting, uh, wiring running it underneath these ribs right here um, had a difficult time trying to use um, the regular black tubing that you normally use the rib tubing that goes around the wires to hide it could have left the wires as is would probably wouldn't be a problem we tried to use the black tubing though it was really tight fitting another so what we did was we used a uh, rod sock same stuff that uh, you make rod socks out of if you guys make your own rod socks and kind of put that in there and I think it had a nice uh, look to it as far as uh, just covering up the wires just something a little different that we did guys that's the walkthrough on this 1436 low John boat uh, the build itself took you just a little bit under two months I'm super pleased with the progress and how quick it actually came along once I started on it I figured it was something it would be something that would take a lot longer than that because like I say I'm a complete novice at this my first build I want to give a shout out to some buddies that helped me out as far as like Scott Brown with the wiring on it, um, I never would have been able to get it done in the amount of time that he did. And it put me light years ahead of where I would have been if I had tried to do it myself. Uh, Rob Ford for the, uh, the aluminum bracket that he built for the trolling motor uh, came out just looking like all that and a bag of chips for sure. Also some YouTubers out there like Tiny Boat Nation, Bass Brothers, Anthony Jones watching their channels, uh, seeing how they did and what they did to get the job done gave me confidence that I could do this myself being a complete novice and never having done a boat build before. I really hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did and enjoyed it, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also I'll put a link to all the products that I used down in the description. Um, I'll put an Amazon link to it. And if you actually click on it and you buy something from it, it helps the channel out as well. And I really appreciate that. Once again, thanks for watching. And remember, until that next video, Get out there and fish.